Hey guys, Mike Reinold from Champion PT and Performance in Boston and MikeReinold.com. Um, today I want to talk about four reasons why you may not be achieving full overhead shoulder mobility. Okay, so this is a pretty common area that we see uh, for tightness in the clients that we work with at Champion where people have a lot of shoulder dysfunctions and then they end up being deficient in the amount of overhead ability that they have with their shoulder range of motion. So obviously this is important for athletes as well as just uh, regular you know, office workers, you know, anyone really that has any type of shoulder uh, pathology or shoulder issues or is looking to enhance performance uh, in their body needs to have full overhead shoulder mobility. So really there's four things I look at when I think about um, shoulder mobility and four potential areas that you could lose motion that we look at. The first one is obviously the, the most simple, it's the shoulder, okay? So the first thing we'll talk about is looking at the shoulder and have you lost some sort of shoulder mobility, okay? That's not the only piece of the equation, we'll talk about that in a second, but with the shoulder there's really two things. One, the capsule. So do we have some sort of loss of motion because of the capsular tissue being tight for whatever reason? Um, I must say that's not a very common type of finding that we see in just the normal person. It's usually somebody that's after surgery, uh, maybe after some uh, uh, significant injury or even like a adhesive capsulitis type person, they would have some sort of capsular changes. But most people don't have a lot of significant capsular changes. So that's not my first go-to that I do to enhance shoulder mobility and I think that's something we should probably be careful with. Uh, I think if you look on the internet and you find some videos on how to enhance overhead shoulder mobility, you'll find some capsular stretches and I would caution you that that's probably not the way you want to go. Uh, the shoulder joint itself is just such a dynamic mobile joint that I think the, the least likely area we should focus on is the capsule and I think you can really do more harm than good. So uh, we'll come back to that, but one is the capsule. The other one is the soft tissue, or really the muscles I should say. but the soft tissue mobility or muscular mobility in there. And that's probably the number one thing that we see. Okay, so when we talk about the shoulder, it's the ability for the arm to actually raise up overhead. And that has to have good capsular and muscular soft tissue mobility. Okay, so any tightness in the rotator cuff muscles, your infraspinatus, your subscap, those are probably two big areas that we see a lot. Your latissimus, your traps, uh, your teres major, anything of those muscle groups may limit the amount of overhead ability you have with your shoulder. So that's the shoulder, that's glenohumeral motion in there. The next thing is obviously then the scapula. So if you can't raise your arm overhead, maybe it's because the shoulder doesn't have full mobility, maybe it's because the scapula doesn't have full mo mobility. And when we see loss of, of mobility for overhead shoulder motion for the scap, it's usually because we lose uh, the ability to upwardly rotate. So we'll call that upward rotation, okay? So the next thing we look at with the scapula is upward rotation. It's, do, does it doesn't have the ability for the scaps to, to, to glide upward like it normally should. Okay, and that's usually not something that's restricted from uh, soft tissue tightness as much as it's usually a motor control issue or an imbalance that we see. So sometimes you could just see an imbalance where maybe the upper trapezius or um, some other muscle group is kind of overpowering the muscles that are responsible for upward rotation, which tends to be the lower trap and the serratus anterior. So we have to make sure that we have a good balance between those muscle groups. The other thing that could be happening if we don't have full upward rotation of the scapula is that we just have poor alignment, okay? And that's really gonna come down to what we talk about with number three is the thoracic spine, okay? So with the thoracic spine, we can have limitations in thoracic spine mobility that could impact the way the scapula sits on the thorax. So that could decrease the ability for the scapula, scapula to upwardly rotate, or thoracic spine mobility itself could be what's causing that loss of overhead mobility. If you can't extend your thoracic spine as you raise your arms up overhead, you're not gonna get full mobility. So that's the classic, if you slump in this position and try to raise your arms, you just don't have the mobility but if you stand up tall, you'll have more mobility. So thoracic spine has to be mobile as well. These are really the top three areas, okay? So one's the shoulder, two is the scapula, three is the thoracic spine. Those are the areas we look for when we're looking for a potential culprit as to why you may have lost overhead mobility. But remember at the beginning of this video, I said there are four things. The fourth thing is probably the least popular thing that people look at, but it's actually lumbopelvic control or what I mean by that is essentially core control. Okay, so now we talked about loss of mobility at the first three areas, but if you have poor lumbopelvic or core control at this area, you could also have poor overhead shoulder mobility.
And what I mean by that, you see a lot of times where people, they go to raise their arm and they just lose that lumbopelvic control and they hyperextend their back and they raise up overhead. So again, look at me in this position here. I'm going to arch my back and I'm going to round my back. Arch my back, round my back. And you can see that my arms are kind of going up and down a few inches. So if you have poor lumbopelvic control, you're going to probably result in too much lumbar extension. Okay, so you're going to hyperextend the low back, and that results in a loss of overhead mobility over time. So you can see in this position, I can still get my arms really high in space, but if you compare the angle of my arm to my body, you can see that I don't have quite full overhead shoulder mobility. If I have good core control and I stabilize, you can see my arms aren't all the way up. I still have this much more motion to go. Okay, so it's not just mobility of the shoulder, the scap, and the thoracic spine, but it's also control of the lumbopelvic area. Okay, so next time yourself, if you're trying to enhance your overhead shoulder mobility or you're working with one of your clients, look for loss of mobility in these three areas, but also look for loss of control in the lumbopelvic area.